Well, hey there, and welcome to episode number nine of Groove, the No Treble podcast, which you can always find at notreble.com. My name is Mitch Joel, and let's get on with the show. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is John Campbell and I play bass in Lamb of God. You play a heavy, heavy bass. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little about, um, not necessarily your roots, but where in you you were like heavy. Like at what point were you like, okay, there's something that's snapping in my brain and I'm going into this place? Huh. Uh, I don't know if there was a specific moment. I, I remember... Uh, like just getting into like we were speaking earlier into DC hardcore and punk rock uh, when I was in high school and junior high, and then uh, came to Richmond, Virginia, and found out about bands like Metallica from Chris Adler, and then bands like War from just being there, and uh, various punk rock and other types of bands that ended up coming out of Richmond. Uh, but as far as super dupes, like incredibly heavy, uh, I remember a band called Codeine. Oh, no, totally, yeah, that, uh, for sure. That song, Cave In. Yeah. Oh, that's a random that, band. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> well, some good friends of mine uh, covered that in their band years and years and years ago in Richmond. Uh, but that's a, whole, that's a great record, the whole Codeine record. Uh, but that's, that's probably some of the heaviest stuff I've ever heard. But when you, so do you get into heavy music first, or are you playing music before you're into that genre? I guess uh, <laughs> I, 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 I came into it from an aggressive, <laughs> okay, but maybe not aggressive like a uh, like we were talking. There's a difference. Like DC hardcore had kind of a thing, and like emo came from there. Although it became something completely different, but uh, it's uh, a it, it just came from uh, I guess the the aggression of punk rock kind of developed into a, a heaviness of you know like the Melvins, right. another heavy band. So. I'm always fascinated with this idea because there's people who love music. I love music. And then I started playing music. And you try. And you practice. And you try. And I think it takes a certain maturity or maybe immaturity to realize. Like I tell other bass players that I'm not a bass player. I know how to play bass. Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself a bass player. So what's that moment for you when you go from loving music to like I I have a creative force inside me. I want to make music. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think that, again, has uh, been something that's always just kind of been there and, and slowly developed into what it is in, in me, personally. Uh, yeah, uh, I could probably cy- psychoanalyze myself. Uh, that's what we're here to do. We're yeah. here to do it. We're doing this. <laughs> we're going to a crack the nut open today. Uh, you know, I just... Uh, who, doesn't like a, who doesn't like a little attention? <laughs> is that it, yeah? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I, honestly, when I got into, like, actually performing music was moving to Richmond, Virginia, which had this insane music scene, at least from what I knew, coming from the suburbs of Northern Virginia, where uh, within a month of living in Richmond, two blocks down from the dorms I was living in, uh, Guar's practice space was there, and then there was the bedroom uh, right across the street, and they had a show, so they would get suited up in their thing, and then just walk across the street and go upstairs and play a show. Uh, and that, uh, that had a a huge impact on me. And then I would uh, be at a house party, you know, two weeks later, and dudes from Guar are hanging out, like, as... Human beings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> human beings, not only human beings, but uh, dudes that were relatable. But they, Although they were a little bit older in the scene. They were the scene stars. I was right. kind of the younger kid. And there's a whole a whole group of scene stars from Richmond that had an insanely great uh, scene going on. Uh, bands like uh, the Alternatives, uh, uh, but but those bands like especially Guar, which I, I you know metal is one of those things where I'm I'm, I'm so into the genre where, where from the outside it can look sort of silly it can look strange but there were like a lot of the bands you're mentioning there is a a heavy performance aspect to the music and there's an intensity to it like Guar was their art like they were sure. it wasn't just dick jokes like they really wasn't they were trying to do this crazy show sure but they're themed with dick jokes uh, a <laughs> band that I should mention coming from that was very influential was this band Breadwinner which uh, is a three piece instrumental band that's uh, incredibly mathy and incredibly heavy and uh, I guess hard to hard to 
understand it first, but it's uh, that, that band, I don't know, the band Slang Louse. I don't know. Oh, I never heard of them, no. These are all amazing bands from Richmond that never uh, got out of Richmond, but weren't ever really concerned with that. Right. They, there was just this little insular scene of uh, amazing bands that, like, you, they would play a house party and then, like, if you wanted to be in a band, that was kind of the bar was set really fucking high. You and I were, were just talking about the fact that we're really similar in age, and I'm proud that I'm at the age where mathy is a great way to describe music. Because <laughs> I don't think, like, when we were growing up in the, we'll call it late 70s and early 80s, probably when we hit our most influential moments of what stuck with us, I don't think mathy was a way we could ever describe music, but it's become something. Yeah, 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 sure. That's pretty are, are you familiar with Breadwinner? I'm not. Oh, man, uh, they have a, a record called The Burner which okay. I suggest anyone listening to this and you as a fan of music listen to uh, some uh, amazing musicians from back in the early 90s in Richmond so you're in this thing you're in this world you're being influenced at one point you tap into the, the bass because we have options <laughs> well, I, <laughs> unless you can sing I, 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 in the shower exactly uh, I, I actually uh, I was trying to play drums uh, my friend had a drum set, he had a roommate who played bass, and I had a bass amp, and a good, another roommate played guitar, and he had a guitar amp, and uh, it was all in his room, and I was like, dude, let me play your drums, because like, your roommates are terrible, I don't know what I'm doing, like, let me learn how to play drums on your case, like, yeah, okay, right. but then the, uh, the bass player left uh, for the summer, and my friend was like, uh, hanging out, listening to all the bullshit noise anyway, I was like, dude, just play bass, I'll play drums. Wow, and, and so, t- tell me a bit about what that initial thing was like was it you just saying well there's drums there's bass was it when you played the instrument you were like okay I'm connected to it? and the reason I asked this is because again I was saying how I traipsed out of bass a little bit and then I started you know pick up an acoustic guitar I'm like I need to stay in music but then when I picked up the bass again there was a real familiarity to it like it felt sure. I, I had a connection right uh, well actually uh, the, the first instrument I ever had to like it stays in my room in its case and I can have access to it whenever it was a baritone uke that my dad gave me oh really uh-huh. okay and then I don't know if I I mean I, I felt connected to the struggle of learning how to play whatever instrument I was going to learn how to play okay. uh, but recently I, I just picked up a baritone bass and I've been getting back on that and that, that shit is amazing it feels natural to you right or uh, yeah well it feels familiar sure. okay the familiarity and so You've got now you're in this world where you got bass. You've got some friends. You're you're forming a band that isn't Lamb of God. It's it's called something else. Mm-hmm. Right, we'll get to that, I guess. Um, I was asked actually earlier in the last interview I did. They they oh, was that you just asked me? No, no, okay. no I don't yeah, think they so. Asked me. So you at what point are you like okay we have I, there's something here like I want to record. I want to make this more than just we're jamming. We're fooling around. Like at what point is that? Uh, that's always I don't know. It's just kind of always kind of band mentality is you gotta write songs write a set record to uh, I guess to eventually be able to go on tour so you can get in a van and go off on this great adventure but but is it something where you're like I'm a bassist or are you like I'm in the band I happen to play bass like how do you see yourself as as, as the musician bass guy or do you not you just see as I'm in the band I, I play bass yeah I, I guess I never I, I, maybe I think self reflective uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I play bass in the band. It's uh, a band that I've put over half of my life into, but in, in the early... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I stopped to think about it so much. Like, I mean, we... Also, everyone does a little bit of everything. That's right. Especially, you know, when it comes to, to, to loving the van, uh, taking care of the van, calling this stuff. So there, there's this, um, something happens in terms of your recording and you're moving into this new world of people coming to know you. Uh, as a guy who, I can be self-reflective of what's happened to you because I'm looking from the outside and it's, it's, you know, it's what you do as, as, sure. as, a, as, a, as a music nerd. And <laughs> they call this the new wave of American heavy metal. And I Oh, well, you're jumping quite a few. I know we are, yeah, I know we are, but we'll, 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 yeah, yeah, sure, we'll, sure, we'll sure. bounce. And so... When you hear that as a metal fan, you sort of you somewhat cringe because all I can align it to is the new wave of British heavy metal, which was right. the, almost the foundation of what it was. I think now in 2015, though, I can look back and go, sure. it totally was the new wave of American heavy metal. We, I, I guess, all of us didn't think that metal was going to have another a moment like that. 
And what's what's crazy to me about it is the bands. It wasn't like Seattle or L.A. It was just this thing of bands from all over the place. Whether it was Slipknot or you guys, it, they really sure. came from all over. Yeah, I think it was. Slipknot kind of slipped into the new metal thing, that's and true. they kind of broke heavy music on the radio. I feel like. Yeah, that's uh, true. But uh, the new wave of American uh, heavy metal thing was just a label that would, was getting put on us at the time, and it, it was the bands that we had been playing like metal fests and basements with uh, just says this for whatever reason underground scene kind of built up uh, I can't tell you why there were people outside of where we were to connect with so that we could go play but it's strange it right uh, do you remember Maximum Rock and Roll totally they put out the yeah. book your own fucking life every year yeah. that was how we booked our tours in the beginning I'm leaving uh, so yeah, it is strange that there are people who are like, yeah, sure, come to my house, stay in my basement, eat spaghetti, and play a show. And it wasn't, it, when I say decentralized, I mean like, it was really decentralized. These bands were coming, I mean, I, in your brain, if someone would have told me there's going to be this massive band called Lamb of God from Richmond, I would have been like, what, like what, how, it's not going to happen. Well, I, th I think it kind of came, at least it, from our end, from the DIY kind of, kind of thing, although we never stopped to put that label on it, it was, uh... Just uh, oh fuck, this would be great. Uh, but was there something ha like if you could, you have to be able to self reflect where you're like, was there something happened politically? Was there ha something happening in the states where if you look back and go, th there was this moment where people wanted this thing again now? Because you, were, you I, were, I don't know if I saw that big of a picture then. I, I do remember when we were called Burn the Priest. This is this is kind of uh, unfortunate to throw into a, uh, a history, I guess. But occasionally people, and I don't know if they were kidding or not, and Burn the Priest. This was, I mean. A very f small amount of people saw us. People would come up and tell us that they had uh, been touched by priests, right. and that, like that—that that was a, a title they could relate to, a proper noun they could relate to. Right. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, um, I want to talk a bit about the style of bass that you play in terms of when you th when you're thinking about what I, what you need to do as a bass player in the band. What is it? Is it terror? Is it is it making sure that the drums are connecting to the guitar? Is it making a voice for the from the bottom? Uh, yeah, probably. It, generally, what I do when I'm playing bass, I, and I look, I've said in the past that I play guitar on a bass. <laughs> yeah, I've read that. Yeah. yeah, which I think a lot of bass players go. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear I you know, say that. <laughs> but, know, but, but it's, it's authenticity just, I mean, and it's good. I am what I am. Yeah. Uh, I think on this latest record, I've I've tried to treat the instrument more as it was designed uh, but if it makes him feel better when I play my baritone youth I don't really have the proper technique in my strumming right so. but I wanted to ask you about that because I actually felt that in the playing and I don't know if you vocalize that in, in other publications what's happening with you and your playing is it that you're getting older is it that you're finding more comfort in how the song the bass can be phrased in the music because that, yeah, that's yeah. what I I mean felt. really it's, it's just because it's I don't what are the Generally speaking, what I'll do is uh, learn the guitar riff and then just throw it down in the lower registers or try and uh, just try and uh, double it up. <laughs> double it up. But, but it's, yeah. interestingly, sometimes like like if I'm rolling up and if they do something that crosses the octave, I'll drop, drop it back down so it does some some odd things sometimes. Some sound weird to play, but really makes sense if you just think that it's just dropping at one point, playing the same thing. Uh, but, the, you know, I think we've developed as a band, if you listen to the Burn the Priest stuff, that's all just riff, 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 right. riff, 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 riff. Yeah. And I think we're just developing as a band where it makes more sense to do that. Where, I mean, maybe it is where we're getting older and, and more comfortable and, and not as angry. <laughs> but, I, but isn't part of it just, it's like the natural evolution. And the reason I'm asking or sort of going down that direction is because some bands, they don't become parodies of themselves, but they believe, well, that's not Flam of God. That's not Van Halen. And... It stifles what they want to do creatively, but they feel like, well, that's not what... But I feel like you guys are willing to push and risk, or am I wrong? No, you're totally right. That's, I mean, that would be boring, I think, to put out uh, every record the same. No, but some bands would be like, but it is who we are, and this is what we do, no, and our I fans... I mean, know. I guess it comes from... I, I don't want to be terribly judgmental, but I know I, maybe they look at it as a brand, that they are building, defining, and, and making, whereas we really just started as like, hey, let's, let's play some heavy music and right. have fun with it. Do you, and we're lucky enough to, to have to, some to success. Do it, yeah. um, 
do you feel that you, as a musician, you're, are you fully satisfied in what, what happens in, in Lamb of God, or are you one of those people where it's like, I got this other stuff, I got to do this, especially when it comes to the instrument, or what you think you and the bass could do? Well, I've, I've wanted a, a drum set for years and years and years, and years. <laughs> Picked one up right before we started this tour. Electric or real? A real thing. Okay. But like nothing fancy at all. It's a it's a piece that uh, somebody I knew had, and I gave him a couple hundred bucks for a, a drum set. So you want to play drums? That's the next. That's I've the next one. I started. I think drums. every Didn't musician wants to play drums. <laughs> <Well, laughs> and uh, just want to hit things. <laughs> yeah, well, rhythmically, <laughs> just want to make some noise, man. Yeah. So. Um, You've had a crazy couple of years, uh, and it's, now it's it's fully documented. It's been all over. Even like the mass media took it in. Yep. Um, where are you guys at as a unit, and where are you at musically? Obviously, the new album Seven just came out, so it's 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 fresh, and I guess that hurdle's been been jumped over. But that sort of stuff stays with you, I guess. You don't just sure. You don't just write a book and feel released. Yeah, but that's you know not to uh, say that things that, that happened in the past and shaped you aren't important, but you know, we're, the, the past is there and we're here in this moment. So. But there's a band of brothers that I found really interesting. Like, you know, look, the media's going to hide things. The band might try and cover things up. It really felt like the conversation was like uh, the situation with Randy caused a financial issue to the band and it wasn't like there was this knives in attitude like you guys really sort of said we have to now work through that issue as if it was like you know medical insurance and like you have to pay off the surgery no but I'm I'm being like really pragmatic about like you guys really stuck together in a very unique way to rebuild what had to have been it's tough I mean you're full time musicians well yeah I mean there was a pretty intense psychological shock going on on my end thinking that this thing that we'd spent over half our lives uh, basically dedicating everything to uh, was going to be gone uh, but there are <laughs> there are plenty of other ways that you can lead yourself to financial ruin. <laughs> exactly uh, That's this true. is just I guess a, a unique one uh, and I'm over over doing it to call it financial ruin but, uh, no but it's, I mean it's it's <laughs> it's a strange it's thing it, it is it's but a strange it, thing. the way I've processed it is that uh, that the greater loss is the loss of a of a life of a family member right. of the family in Prague. So you know, I'm still here. Yeah, it's a. Cra- I mean, it's one of those stories that you read and you don't know how to how to digest it. Yeah, yeah try looking through no, it. No, that's and, what I'm and saying. The uncertainty like, that's, yeah. of, of how that went on was such an intense, an intensely uh, unsettling time in my life. Yeah, no, I, I, can't, I can't even begin to imagine. Um, I want to switch back to the bass because one of the things yeah. that, that you're it, it's a funny you know it's funny and it's silly. It's like so. You became known as this guy who's playing three strings, and uh, when people ask me about it, I always say that I think uh, necessity is the mother of invention, and that's the story, right? It's like yeah, that's, that's you just couldn't afford to. Well, that's the answer that, yeah. of, that I've given in an interview when I was shocked that somebody that, it, that <laughs> it's great. I think they write about it because that's just something to write about. Right. It was really not that big of a deal. I just. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't use that string anyway. <laughs> Do you not really still? Uh, th- there is a there's <laughs> one funny. song. There is one song that that in which I use that, but we don't have it in the uh, in the set. I'm trying to. Write, wasn't there a metal band that the guy always played two? Str- was it Disneyland yeah, after? Did I play one string? Oh, yeah. that might have been yeah, right. Yeah. It's and like a an Evo or about the same time. There was another. Uh, I remember there was another band that played the two. And there's always girls against boys. They had the two bass players. Right, that's true too, for sure. Great, great band, great band. And they came from a band called Soulside from DC hardcore scene. I didn't realize they were. There was a band called Soulside. Basically, a different singer became uh, Girls Against Boys. Okay, that's, that's pretty wild. That's great. So, right now, um, with the new album out, is, are you are you in the phase where it's tour album or are, creatively? Where do you go as a musician? Is what's your cycle like for? Uh, mentally, as a musician, right now, I'm just trying to have the perfect show and, and chasing okay. that buzz of the perfect show. Does that happen? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Does it happen? Yeah. I mean, well, you have a couple stinkers, but yeah, when when you're just nailing stuff and everything sounds right and everything connects, it's uh, it's like you're floating above the stage. Yeah. So t- t- tell me about live and playing. Not the difference between that and studio. I think that's sort of like a, a, a boring question, but like you said, there's 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 an adrenaline to play this music that you can't. That you're going to do once. You're not going to replicate after. It's good. How do you? keep that momentum going it's heavy music so it's not like you can you can't you can't phone it in 
right. this music can't be fun especially I think where you guys are at in, in terms of your career and your success you yeah, can't afford to do it being, I mean, being an overgrown bar band that's rapidly aging uh, <laughs> being a uh, being a uh, you have to consider the performance uh, of the music as well as the crafting of the music uh, yeah I don't know how I, you know it's somehow it, it's still there when you don't sit that's what I'm sitting around waiting to do all day when we talk about kids you're like okay well what percentage is nature versus nurture what what is what is, what is, what is so so what's when you're playing what, what percentage is mental versus really physical because the physical part is it's I know you guys it's crazy I mean that's uh, I guess a, a combination of having the right finger bone lengths with the muscles in the right spot and having, being lucky enough to spend enough time being paid to to do this I have had enough practice doing this that I've managed to develop that skill but is it a blue collar approach is it like I wake yeah, up from I, I, I write I play music it's what I do it's sort of like I don't just lounge all day and then we or or is it this the lifestyle of lounging because uh, uh, well, no no it's a uh, it can be the lifestyle of lounging when you have the time but uh I don't at home have a bass on the wall and then spend hours playing it when I'm okay. at home. Uh, but I also, like I said, I have two children, so I'm uh, while I'm away, this is my lounge right now, okay. relative to the rest of my life. Um, but uh, like I've got the baritone uke that I play uh, at least daily, sometimes uh, multiple times a day. How much effort do you put into the physical bass playing? Then what's your? Um, well, as we have a tour coming up, I'll, I'll pick up the bass at home and just run through stuff and just make sure I remember stuff. And the, uh, so it's not an everyday, like, I gotta, there's this thing here and I don't feel it's expressed everything to, I needed to. To, dis uh, to disappoint everyone, no. No, it's not disappointment. Yeah. I think everyone brings their own style to it, which is what makes yeah. art amazing. So, no, not at all. So, who are, are there, are there bass players that you look to and you're like, see, that's, that's something right there? Oh, I remember uh, this guy, Mike Bishop. Uh, who played in Gore and then the Keypone and now he's back in Gore. Okay. Uh, watching that guy play was like, holy shit, like he's, he's, got, his, he's got the same uh, finger technique. And then he starts singing. Like, oh, Jesus. Like, How? That, that guy is, is one of the few that he In Richmond, he's not as good as the few, but he is an incredibly talented person. I never understood uh, bass players who could sing. I find that, I mean, I think it's probably one of the reasons I might have like said I can't, I can't be a bass player. Have I, you ever had the chance to speak to Mike Bishop? No, but I, you know, even though I think about like, Getty Lee, or yeah, I oh, can go through the yeah. bass singing and playing. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and foot pedal. It's not enough. You got to play piano with your feet too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So easy. So yeah, natural. There are, some, there are some people that are uniquely talented like that. And ta so tell me a little bit about inspiration. So, I mean, you are very. I think you're very much an artist. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Where does it, it, inspiration outside of music, reading, movies, film, books? What, uh, where do you? I, I watch a ton of documentaries. I'm a documentary uh, guy I, too. I, I read uh, occasionally. Are you, uh, not to blow up any websites or anything, but, uh, backslash R documentaries? Are you familiar no. With that? I left out the first half of the website. Though. Okay, you'll tell us uh, something later. Uh, Reddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, documentaries at subreddit? No. So they're, uh, they're posting movies in there? It's just links, links to, okay, uh, like, you, on YouTube where there's oh, full like, movies. Right. Yeah. So good. Okay, I'm going. I'm there. I, like Netflix, I'm exhausted. I think I finished yeah, yeah, Netflix yeah. on the documentary section, so I got to... If you understand how Reddit works, it's totally. updated constantly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, life on the road, uh, playing-wise. So we're sitting here. It's heavy Montreal. You are playing much later in the day. Is it one of those things where it's a sort of slow flash life, where, like, the days are really sort of like you got, you're just working towards the night. What's the lifestyle like as a working bass guy? Uh, well, at this point, it's a, it's a fairly easy schedule, to be honest. Uh, but it, it's, we've had some in-stores where we'd have to uh, just go about, uh, <laughs> go about lunchtime to an in-store. <laughs> Yes, Don't make it sound too easy because people want to do it. Sort of yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> arduous work, you know. Well, this is my schedule. Other people have different schedules in the band. Willie wakes up like eight in the morning, sometimes six in the morning. It's just his style, which actually would drive me crazy on the tour bus. I like my style of <laughs> submarining and sleeping <laughs> until until it stops. And you know what I mean? Uh, but again, uh, you know, you go to an in-store, you come back. Uh, there's we've been a uh, at the merch booth had uh, signed drum heads and signed CDs so there'll be a stack of things to run through and so on and then we do a meet and greet and then uh, then I, I 
I've got about an hour or two to kill to try and catch up with my family back home. Right. Uh, two young kids? Two young kids. How old are you? Four and seven. So similar world. That's not an easy lifestyle then. So this is getting more, is this, getting, this is getting more and more complex as you get older then. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it always? Yeah. Regardless of whether right. you're... It's uh, true, uh, fair enough. <laughs> a dude lucky enough to play bass or a dude who's uh, pushing right. boxes or whatever. So I want to sort of bring it together by asking you about where the band is at because I still feel as popular as it is there's a lot more levels for this band to achieve and it feels to me like the past being the past the new album being what it is and the sort of trajectory as someone who's been in this industry and seen it that there's I feel something happening I feel it for you I guess what I'm saying um, you have to put the pedal a bit further down now to make that happen in this day and age right yeah I think so sure I mean, we put out a record that some of these tracks that might attract a bigger audience that maybe uh, it won't develop in that way. Uh, but is this a band that wants to Metallica, Slayerish, uh, like yeah. top four type of thing? Because that's the age part, right? Because as it goes I, on... Yeah, I mean, you, honestly, we just, just sort of put out a record that we were really into making and it's just... Uh, we don't do it thinking like... I mean, although when the when I heard uh, Overlord for the first time, I I started joking about this as our more than words. Right. If you remember. Uh, sure. Extreme. Uh, extreme. Right. Yeah. right. Uh, I even was thinking about trolling people when it, when the single got released. I put up a link to go to more than words, sure. but I thought better of it. Uh, but yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't think we have plans to uh, necessarily. Uh, and we'll we'll see where this takes us. You know, who who comes out of the woodwork to uh, invite us to their play a show somewhere the other part of the band that I find really interesting is we do live in a day and age where people talk about how much harder it is to be a band how much harder it is to sell music digital web all that stuff you you feel to me to be transcending that like the fans are the fans and they are buying this stuff they are sticking by it am I misguided? no I think uh, for the most part that's true I mean when we changed the name from Burn the Priest to Lamb of God we were a little bit bummed thinking dude what about the that was what that was 90 was Four no, no, that was later. Okay. Was when we signed okay. Prosthetic. Uh, but we're like, dude, we sold like 1,500 records as Burn the Priest. Like, what about those dudes? They're like, how are they going to know who the fuck Lamb of God is? Right. And I think uh, the first pressing of our shit, uh, Prosthetic put a sticker on there, formerly known as Burn the Priest, just to uh, appease us. But now in the, in the digital age, is it affecting you negatively or positively? And I've interviewed artists that have done it extremely well with it. Like, they just know how to use social media, they know to market actually using it to leverage versus it being this oh it's so hard to sell albums it's so hard to get music out there um we you know we have people that, uh, that we have people there, there are people <laughs> very that, important there, yes. are people that, well, there are people that take care of the social media stuff uh, that is not the bass player now we've got although I, is I, it not your thing not particularly I, you know, I have a, a Facebook account where I'm in touch with my friends and family I make friends as we travel around uh, I've, I've tweeted a couple times. I've noticed. Yeah. I've got an Instagram account, but it's like 30 followers. That's <laughs> just my friends. We're going to work it. We're going to work it. We're going to work it. No, I don't want them. Yeah, okay. like, we'll, we'll keep like it quiet. We'll keep it quiet. Yeah. And state of metal in general, state state of that, how do you how do you see it? I mean, we're, you know, we're here at a three-day festival where there's a lot of stuff going on, but the but is, is a, it's a, it's a challenge. I think it's a challenge genre. I don't think it's the same as it was when... We, we had moments when we were growing up, 80s, 90s, that were... I'd like to think that uh, it is changing, as all things do, as is the nature of things. Uh, and I am thankful that I'm still able to do what I do. Um, having what we went through happen, you know, yeah. life has got curveballs ready for you. There's another Kurt Cobain around the corner who's going to come out and uh, expose the ridiculousness of metal right. with just a, with just a couple songs. But metal, you know, metal is uh, metal's a cockroach. You know what I mean? <laughs> it it really is. is. It's, it's a cockroach. Is. It's, 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 it's rock is dead and jeans. Well, I, I don't know. Metal's a cockroach. I think it's the like punk rock and metal kind of fused the, its soul together right. back in the uh, back in our in our formative years. Uh, and there's an energy for sure that is pervasive. Do you think the 
that bass as an instrument still has a, a very interesting trajectory. And the reason I'm asking you this is because you're a musician and you know it's the bass is still a new instrument. Like the I'm electric bass, bass sure. is, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think I, I still find it incredibly interesting, and I have ridiculous amounts to learn on it. Obviously, uh, yeah, I, I don't feel it's going anywhere. And and. From a tech point too, I find that you are trying other things, not just with how you play, but with the sound of what's happening too. That seems to be something that's my. You're nodding, or not? Uh, I'm, I'm trying or to is think. Or more production versus you? <laughs> yeah, I, I have a like I have a solid sound that I like to stick with, and okay. I, I'm not a big fan of pedals and effects. Those are things that can break and go wrong. And I guess when I learned how to play bass, cost money. <laughs> Hence the three strings. <laughs> Hence the three strings. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Uh,